board meeting for Great Valley School District. Uh, first thing on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody could stand and hopefully have a flag and repeat with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America States of America and to the Republic, and to the Republic which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> the board met in executive session to discuss some legal and personnel issues. Um, we're not meeting afterwards. Moving on to secretary correspondence. Any update? No, I didn't receive any correspondence to share with the board this evening. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, the disadvantage of this June meeting. So. <laughs> All righty, uh, Chester County Intermediate Unit. Yes, uh, Mr. Barrett, uh, there was a meeting virtually on June 7th. There was some graduation videos virtually. There was an art show across the Intermediate Unit virtually. And the Executive Director, uh, Mr. Fior's evaluation uh, was completed <laughs> by Survey Monkey, and lastly, a three-year collective bargaining agreement has been reached uh, with the employees of the IU unit. The next meeting will be July eighth, virtually. All right. Uh, legislative update. Anything, Wendy? Hi, Dave. It's Wendy Litsky. Um, the Chester County uh, School Board Council. Um, the meeting was canceled last Wednesday due to the late June legislative agenda. Uh, and our next meeting is August the 26th. All right. Um, Council for Diversity and Inclusion, Samantha? Hi, this is Samantha. The last meeting was prior to our last board meeting and I provided an update at that time. There has not been a diversity and inclusion meeting since the last board meeting. All right, thank you. Any update from the Great Valley Education Foundation? I do have a brief update, thanks Dave. Um, I just wanted to share that in the face of all of the, um, the wild ride we've all been on over the last few months, the um, Foundation of Great Valley has stayed focused on continuing to expand the work it does for the students and the community of Great Valley. Um, in particular, of late, the Good Neighbors Fund, which is a new initiative um, brought about by the foundation to enable members of the community to help members of the community in times of need, um, has really moved from its initial phase of getting itself off the ground to actually having some meaningful um, contribution. So the Good Neighbor Fund has provided um, $1,000 worth of grocery gift cards to the district to be used to assist Great Valley families that have needed help. And the group is looking forward to um, really expanding that work and, and doing more good deeds for our good neighbors um, in the months ahead. And then I also wanted to just make a special sort of call out for volunteers. We have a really ambitious agenda ahead for the foundation. Um, we have a lot that we want to accomplish and we need help, frankly, to get it done. So um, we're looking for folks that have experience in certain areas like social media and communications, fundraising, event planning, project management. And we're hoping over the next few months to welcome some new committee members, some committee chairs, and even folks just willing to help lend a few hours here or there to help with some of these events and campaigns and other initiatives throughout the year. So please help us spread the word. There's lots of information available on the website and we are excited about what's ahead. All right, excellent. <clears throat> any other reports at this point from any other board member? All right, um, excuse me, moving on to the superintendent's update. Well, thank you so much, President Barrett. Um, although 
We typically have two meetings in June. This now uh, will be my final superintendent's update and I just wanna say thank you so very much. Um, I'm excited to share some updates with you. Um, what you will see, our first update is our office reopening. So as we transition to that slide, And why that's getting prepared. You have it in your agenda. So as it's being prepared to be shared publicly, um, I will get started. The office reopening will begin on July 13th. And in preparation that although Chester County is in the green phase, the safety precautions will be in place. So staff will be required to self-monitor symptoms of COVID-19, fever, sore throat, cough, headache, etc. And they must take their own temperature prior, prior to arriving to work each day. Anyone with a temperature over 99.5 must contact their supervisor and stay home. The following directives will be shared to please stay home if you feel sick or have any of the following. Any one of the following symptoms, fever, cough, or shortness of breath. Any two of the following systems, la symptoms, lack of smell, taste, chills, headache, muscle pain, or sore throat. We will limit the usage of common spaces such as break and lunch rooms to two people at a time. Even though physically present, meetings should still occur virtually when feasible to minimize contact. When engaging with families, everyone will be encouraged to schedule appointments. We will not refuse unannounced visitors, but we will limit the number of unscheduled visitors. Social distancing of six feet should be applied to the fullest extent possible. Masks are not required if working alone in a personal office but they must be worn when leaving personal offices or when entering another person's office. Masks are required when working in shared spaces. Supervisors will work directly with their departments to reduce shared spaces. All visitors must wear a mask upon entry unless due to a medical reason, and employees are asked to wash hands regularly and use hand sanitizer frequently. Upon return to the buildings, um, I do have to say an incredible shout out to um, Jim Abraham, Ken Morris, the incredible maintenance and facilities team, the custodians have been doing an amazing job. So you will, when entering buildings, see the plastic uh, partitions and the idea of maintaining customer service while also keeping the health and safety of everyone in our buildings at the forefront. Um, so any of the adjustments or changes that you will see are really intended to keep everyone safe. Summer communications, as is incredibly obvious, there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of communications that have been coming. And there's a comprehensive communi communication plan for the many topics we need to share with all of our stakeholders this summer. As always, we'll communicate through a variety of ways, including email, video, our website, GVTV, the e-newsletter, which is sent out to all families, as well as those who sign up independently, and social media. A section of the website is also now set up to share news and information over the summer. As new information becomes available, it will be posted, and the community is encouraged to check back often. The other opportunity is to enable the RSS feed from the website, so if you're familiar with an RSS feed, which is short for really simple syndication, and it's a way to have information delivered to you instead of you having to go and find it or instead of you having to continually um, go back to keep checking the website. So the website will allow you to see if there's anything new. The RSS allows you to subscribe to a website and have any new published information sent to you. So you may do this with other um, forums that you use. And if you sign up for the RSS, and I believe on the next slide you will see 
what that little icon will look like. Oh, up one. It's not showing up. There is a, an RSS and a little icon that almost looks like um, Wi-Fi. And when you click on that, it will give you an opportunity to subscribe. Once you are a subscriber, you will receive, you'll put in your email or whichever um, device you'd like to send you a ping or a notification. And that feed reader gathers the feeds in one place. And just like the browser homepage, the feeder app on your phone. So you can easily get those updates and then go and check that information. Finally, the July 20th meeting preview. Dr. Gafredo will be leading on July 20th, and at that meeting, he will be sharing the preliminary health and safety plan for the reopening of schools. The athletics and band, the PIAA sports for the 2021 school year will also be shared. This evening, uh, Mr. Seymour, the athletic director, will be sharing the summer, the voluntary um, plan for summer activities, sports and activities, that will be implemented. And the guidelines from PIAA require the school board to approve the plan prior to its implementation. So the athletics and activities um, health and safety plan will be approved this evening, and that is for summer and voluntary activities. The requirement from the Department of Education for any instruction requires the approval of the plan the health and safety plan to be approved by the board. So the preliminary health and safety plan will be shared on July 20th, and the final health and safety plan will be approved at the August board meeting prior to the start of school. Understanding a lot of information will be shared on July 20th, but with the allowance to adjust as new guidance becomes available from the entities that we work very closely with um, to keep everyone safe. So the summer updates are available at www.gvsd.org backslash COVID-19. The class of 2020 news, um, it has been a great joy to uh, welcome our graduates, graduates to the auditorium. The high school really did an amazing job this month for formal graduation photos. Students had the opportunity to walk across the stage in the, in the auditorium and have a formal graduation photo taken. Appointments were scheduled and social distancing was very clearly practiced. Since our class of 2020 has 298 members, a whole class in-person graduation that includes all graduates plus family members, friends, and faculty exceeds the state guidelines even in green. The senior student council leaders met with the high school administration and shared that they believe the events that already occurred, the virtual graduation on June 5th, and the individual family celebrations at school from June 22nd through tomorrow, the 30th, have honored the traditions of graduation. They believe many of their classmates feel this way as well. Students shared that they would like to have one more opportunity to be at school to see their classmates. So the high school is planning a casual evening event that includes food, games, music, and opportunities for yearbook signings somewhere on the Great Valley campus. The high school is in the process of surveying students about a date for that event and soliciting interest. So as that information becomes available, that will be available on the website as well as through the RSS feed. Again, thank you all so very much. And that is the end of my update, President Barrett. All right. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> thanks to all the uh, high school staff, yourself, and everybody else that was involved with that uh, coming together with uh, the pictures for the seniors. I know that for those that participated, I'm sure it was worth every second to them. And uh, I know they appreciate it. So thank you to everybody. A huge shout out, as you said, um, Mr. Barrett, to the high school staff. It was a truly amazing, a lot of fun, a um, lot of special moments. So thank you. And the um, we've increased the numbers tremendously. So many more folks, many more um, students 
attended than we had originally expected last week. I'm sure they're uh, finding out how much fun their classmates had and are probably uh, changing their minds so, and showing up now. So it's good. Hi, this is Samantha. I have a, a question on the last part that Regina spoke about, the um, potential of the summer celebration. Could you just out outline how that will be um, allowable with the, the current social distancing guidelines? Is it, is it not everybody wants or, or what are the, I know you're serving people, but what, what's the, what is the plan for that? to make sure it stays in line with current guidelines? It, yes, it would only be um, the students, so it would not include any kind of any family members. And currently we have 298 seniors and the guidelines are up to 250. So that is the solicitation to find out how many people would, would come. And if every senior would want to come, then the high school would work on splitting the groups um, and finding a way to do that uh, using multiple locations. Uh, to allow for the social distancing. So they've really been um, focused and organized in having multiple options for location as well as those backup plans. Um, would, would any teachers be part of that? I know that in neighboring districts, some um, students appreciated having an opportunity, even though it was remote, to say goodbye to their teachers. Is that part of the plan or is it strictly students at this time? Well, it would honestly depend on Again, if all three 298 students indicate attending, it would minimize the ability for everyone to be there. So if it's similar to the feedback or the response that we received from the pictures and we have about half, then it certainly would be backfilled with staff. Uh, staff is very interested in attending, but they understand that um, the social distancing guidelines and the, the capacity guidelines must be followed so the, all of that is part of this planning process and the high school a lot of solicitation and organization of the student council great thank you for clarifying no thank you <clears throat> all right uh, next thing up is uh, the voting section of the meeting um, if there were any public comments uh, made, they would, according to the website, there was an email address uh, listed for sending those comments in um, on voting agenda items at this point. There'll be another <clears throat> session at the end for any other comments. Um, Mrs. Blake, did we receive any for voting agenda items? Mr. Barrett, there are two emails that concern uh, voting items on the agenda. The first is from Christina Hartley at 305 Sidley Road in Malvern. Um, she says, I learned that tonight you would be voting on a resolution opposing racism and supporting inclusive school environments. I have not been able to locate that resolution or any information about it. What is the point of this vote? Just to go on record as being against racism? Is the verbiage of the resolution available? If so, where? I would have liked the opportunity to read it before your vote so that I can make an informed comment, as do many others. How are we to know you are just not voting on something that is generically worded, meaningless, non-binding resolution that will check the box but result in no real change? Who helped put together this resolution? Was it a diverse group of advisors? How come the diversity committee did not even know about this? The second comment is from Laura Bro at 6 Goshorn Drive in Malvern. I am writing with regard to this evening's board meeting. I have, been made, I have been made aware that during this evening's meeting, the board will vote on a resolution opposing racism and supporting inclusion. I would like to add my voice to the many who agree that Black Lives Matter, that GVSD indeed has a racism problem, and that inclu inclusivity, diversity, and education on these topics is of the utmost importance to our students and our community. So it seems that I would favor a yes vote on the pending resolution. However, I am disappointed that the district has not made the agenda for tonight's meeting, nor the verbiage of the proposed resolution available to the Great Valley community in advance of the meeting. As such, I am hesitant to weigh in on the resolution in one way or another. My concern is that the vote will be merely symbolic, allowing the district to claim to have taken action on race-related issues while making not substantive change in the day-to-day -day workings of our district. Without seeing the resolution in advance, how can the public weigh in on it? Moving forward, please communicate plans for such important votes to the community, along with the language of the item on which a vote is intended ahead of said vote. Thank you for your time and attention. That's the only comments I have. 
All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> First thing up is the consent agenda item. So do I have a motion for 5.01 and 5.02? Move to approve. I, I heard Samantha's name, so I take it that was a motion to approve, Samantha? Motion to approve 5.01 and 5.02. Thank you. Do I have a second? Amy Chain, second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the minutes or the invoices? All right. Um, my list here. Uh, Wendy. Are you on mute, Wendy? Sorry, Dave, I'm here. That's right. Didn't mean to catch you off guard. I or nay? Aye. All right. Uh, Brian? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Amy? Aye. Uh, Stephen? Aye. Jen? Aye. What am I missing? Sorry. Samantha. Hi. <laughs> Samantha. Sorry. That's Samantha. I. <laughs> Thank you. And Neha. I. And Neha. Thank you. And Dave is an I. Teach me not to have the list in front of me because I always forget one. Um, all right. Motion passes nine to zero. Next up is the financial approvals for six oh one through six oh six. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Amy Chain. Thank you. Do I have a second? Litsky. Thank you. Um, Chuck, can you just go over these since we didn't have a work session real quick? Um, maybe to highlight them all. Uh, Certainly. What they, what they are and what, what we're approving. Certainly. We're Thank you. Page. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Item 6.01 and 6.02. Uh, our contract addendums to our transportation contractors, uh, George Kraft, Jr. and Sons, and Norcross. Um, this is a result of prematurely ending the physical school year and um, honoring the transportation contracts we have in place with these contractors. So we've negotiated some uh, year-end closing that'll take <laughs> of last year's transportation. 6.03 is uh, an annual approval for uh, Dude Solutions facility software. It includes packages for energy management, uh, managing all of our events, facility rentals. Uh, there's an automation uh, component that takes the building automation systems and controls the HVAC room. So for example, when somebody's running out an auditorium, the system will automatically turn the heat up or the air conditioning up and those kinds of things. And then finally, there's the uh, work order system component that we use for all staff to enter things that need done in the buildings and then assign those work orders to our staff. Item 6.04 is the annual uh, approval for the board to authorize district initiated real estate tax assessment appeals. This is as per board policy number 627 that governs uh, how we can do these uh, district initiated appeals. And we have identified 12 parcels that meet the conditions of board policy 627. So we're asking the board's approval to, to authorize those, those uh, assessment appeals. 6.05 is professional development, virtual professional development. It will provide four sessions with 25 professional staff in each session. So the $7,000 will provide professional development for 100 professional staff members. And this is for um, knowing how to use the education edition of Minecraft and will help with social and emotional learning in, uh, in distance learning. Finally, 6.06 uh, .06 is our uh, website management software. And this is Blackboard that manages everything about our, excuse me, our, our website, the content, and also video publishing and, and viewing. Um, and that's a total cost of $15,944. All right. Um, thank you for the overview. 
Um, <clears throat> just a clarification to the bus amendments for those who haven't looked at it, right, is all about covering those bus companies' fixed costs, uh, i.e. helping pay for the buses that were utilized during the shutdown and um, not covering the drivers who were uh, furloughed at the time, correct? That was the... That's correct, thank you. Basic summary of these, yeah, okay. Um Dave, this is Jen Armstrong. I just want to make sure yeah. as well, the district initiated real estate, real estate tax assessment appeals are, uh, are assessed on all property in Great Valley, whether they be residential or commercial. They just need to fit in our criteria, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Uh, this is Samantha. I'd like to go back to the bus contract just to, to clarify what you just said, Dave. It's to cover the fixed cost, not the not the cost of the furloughed drivers, but that's because the drivers are able to and, and have, as far as we know, employed uh, applied for unemployment. Correct? Yes. Thank you. Just to and yeah. then my yeah, I just want to make that clear. I know that uh, reading the details, many of us are aware, but wanted to make sure it was clear for the for the public that that was that was the case. Um, we certainly value our drivers. Yeah, we value the drivers, and um, I mean, that was a craft decision whether he was going to pay them or not, right? Um, we didn't have a say in that. Um, yeah. So obviously, what we were trying to do is cover their costs um, without, you know, so their buses, uh, you know, he's still got a, a, I don't know, mortgage isn't the right word, but bus payments um, on loans to cover those, and um, he's also going to have some costs for maintenance. Um, Till we're back up and running again. So um, the goal was to um, cover that. It was done throughout the county, uh, probably throughout the state. Um, it varied. Um, some school districts, just so everybody knows, um, actually had, even in Chester County, had a clause that said that they had to pay their bus company 100%, whether or not they utilized the buses or not. Um, Ours did not have that clause, and so this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, roughly, it's under two thirds of what the original contract would have called for. So, good savings for the district, and the bus drivers were collecting unemployment, as far as we know. Thank you. I have a second question on six point zero three, the Dude Solutions Facilities Software Rental. Chuck, if for some reason, uh, because of COVID, our, we, we're, not, we're not able to rent facilities or, or we're even closed, we, we don't know what that looks like in the fall and over the course of the school year, would we still pay the full price of that software or is there any way to have it prorated or to have the, the, all the, everything related to rental and facilities just you know, be um, flexible so that we just pay for it when we're actually using it versus not when we're not, when we're not using it? Yes, we've been using the School Dude software since 2007, and we're using numerous packages, as you can see by the, the yep. uh, agenda item. So we're what would be considered a good customer, and I fully anticipate that they would be fully cooperative with us in the event that we wanted to discontinue any one of those packages and get some form of a prorated uh, rebate of our cost. Thank you. This is Neha. I have a question on 6.05. Um, I'm probably the only person in the world that is not familiar with Minecraft, but can somebody explain to me um, with this education edition, is that something that is to be used by all departments, all subjects, or is this a, a niche thing? Um, I'm not sure if I can definitively answer that. What I can tell you is that they did the test with it this, this past few months and had a lot of uh, teachers and students working together and did um, um, virtual graphics of, of the high school and they were gonna expand that. So it's a, um, it is a, a, by virtue of the title, education component, the educational version, it's intended for school districts and uh, for virtual learning and use by the students and the staff. Um, Regina, do you have any additional absolutely. information besides yes. that? Uh, Dr. O'Toole is actually our resident expert and has been working. The great benefit, especially as we were in a virtual environment and that will expand moving forward, the great benefit was it truly was district-wide. Um, we had students at all levels working together 
in this virtual world, incorporating many skills as well as the social emotional um, areas involved and in need of as students for distance. Um, a lot, the benefits curricularly as are included there are about the coding skills and the implementation of our lesson plans through a, a digital world. But the benefits exceed that as far as the social emotional and the opportunity for students to connect across levels. Great, thank you. All right, any other questions or comments on the financial approvals? <coughs> All right, then we'll turn to voting. Wendy. Aye. Thank you. Brian? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Amy? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Uh, Jen? Aye. Samantha? Aye. Neha? Aye. And Dave is also an aye. Motion passes nine to zero. Uh, next up is personnel approvals. I have a motion. Motion to approve 7.01. This is Jen. This is second. Amy. Second. All right. Any questions on any of these? All right. Uh, uh, Wendy for voting. Aye. Brian. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Amy. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Jen. Aye. Whoop. Samantha. Aye. Neha. Aye. Dave is aye. Motion passes nine to zero. All right. Um, this moves us down to program approvals. We'll take these individually. So the first thing up is 9.01, a resolution for denouncing racism, affirming Great Valley's uh, school district's commitment to inclusive school environments. Um, do I have an introduction and a motion? This is Rachel Gallegos. Um, I would be glad to do the introduction <clears throat> and motion for approval. Um, so the next item that the board will be considering this evening is a resolution denouncing racism and affirming Great Valley School District's commitment to anti-racist, diverse, equitable, and inclusive school environments. The fact that it is 2020 and here we find ourselves needing to denounce racism is quite frankly disheartening and unacceptable. Recent events in our country have showcased that systemic racial injustices and inequities do persist in our country and our community, and so much more progress is needed. Victims of racism and racial inequities, especially Black Americans and those of all backgrounds who stand with them, have demanded that as a society, we publicly acknowledge, demand, and act in a way that demonstrates that Black lives matter and that racism will not be tolerated. With the adoption of the resolution that is before us this evening, our board will speak accordingly and with one united voice. I'm proud to move that we approve the resolution that is before us this evening as presented. And I hope that all of my fellow board members will join me in supporting this resolution. I'm going to read it and I know that it will be made publicly available after this meeting. <clears throat> so bear with me while we read this, please. Um, the title, Resolution denouncing racism and affirming Great Valley School District's commitment to anti-racist, diverse, equitable, and inclusive school environments by the Great Valley School Board of School Directors. Whereas the members of the Great Valley Board of School Directors are saddened and outraged by recent events that demonstrate systemic racial injustice and inequity that persists in our country, and whereas racism and hate have no place in our schools, which should be places for the practice of equity, anti-racism, the building of community and understanding with and of others. And whereas schools have the tremendous opportunity to enable positive and tangible social change by empowering students and staff to support diverse, equitable and inclusive learning environments and oppose systemic and structural biases and racism. 
And whereas it is urgent that we engage our entire school community in meaningful and honest conversation about racial inequality, build alliances with those committed to social justice and equality, take an active anti-racist stance, and work together to put an end to racial injustice and inequity. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, members of the Great Valley Board of School Directors, categorically denounce the racial injustices and inequalities that persist in our country, and be it further resolved that we, members of the Great Valley Board of School Directors, stand steadfast in our commitment to creating an anti-racist, diverse, equitable, inclusive, and respectful learning environment in all of our schools, programs, and operations, and be it further resolved that we, members of the Great Valley Board of School Directors, affirm our commitment to opposing and preventing racist behaviors and actions, racial bias, inequity, and injustice in our schools, programs, curriculum, operations, and beyond. Then I um, motion, and I will say this incorrectly, but ask the board to um, approve this resolution so that we as a community and school district can continue our work on this path. This is Amy Chain. I'm happy to second. Thank you, Amy. All right. So we have a motion and a second on this resolution. Um, any questions or comments? This is Samantha as the board representative of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. I am very happy that we have put this resolution together and we'll probably vote yes for it. It is one step among a lot of work that we are doing as, as Rachel uh, mentioned. And I, for one, uh, look forward to the continued work uh, and activities of the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Committee this year including um, some things that are already starting. I, I, I'm made aware of, of there are committees looking at some of the curriculum and, and that will continue with the help of the Diversity and Inclusion, Inclusion Committee. I, I find that a particularly important aspect to look at. So thanks uh, to the board for coming up with this and I look forward to the vote. Mr. Chair, this is Mr. Dittman. Based oh. on the, um, the resolution and the spirit of the seconding, I call for a voice vote. All righty. Do we have any other questions or comments around this? Uh, Mr. Barrett, this is uh, Jen Armstrong. I just want to say that I'm very thankful to the district that we um, that we formed and we kind of started our diversity committee. And thank you for the board members who are on our diversity committee. Um, and I look forward to hearing um, more updates. I know that it, it's in its infancy right now. And um, I know I, for one, have been on the board for a while. And I know when we formed this committee, we were, um, we were very aware that it was a needed committee. And I um, would encourage all of us to remember and to keep this on our, on our agendas that, that we are inform well informed of the work of the committee. So I just thank you for that. All right. Yeah, this is Dave. I mean, this is just like, um, I don't want anybody to think this is a start or an end. This is just a step as we progress. And there's a lot of work that's been done on the, the diversity um, and inclusion council. And I, and in addition to uh, the staff that's on, I just want to thank public members that are on that committee and, um, and look forward to continuing down the path of uh, achieving this. So. All right, uh, moving forward, um, let's move to the voting phase. Wendy? Aye. Brian? Aye. That was an aye. Yes, an aye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just making sure. Rachel? Aye. Amy? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Jen? Aye. Samantha? Aye. Neha? Aye. And Dave and I. Motion passes nine to zero. Thank you. This All is right. Rachel. Thank you. I just want to say a quick thank you to, to yeah. the entire board. I wanted to wait till the vote, but I, I think it, it means a lot that a group of nine can come together on an, an issue like this. Um, and, and find out a way, figure out a way to move forward and to do so unanimously and to reaffirm our commitment publicly. I think that that is meaningful. And as Dave said, just one step of many that we as a district will continue to take. So thank you everybody so much. 
Thank you, Rachel, and thank you for the comprehensive inter introduction too. This is Neha. Um, I just want to say that again, I appreciate the um, the board of the district um, district's reaffirmation of our commitment to um, continuously, certainly not stand by and. Uh, but to, to continue to move forward, to continue to progress, continue to strive to improve and to be open-minded and receptive um, to the input of our community in tackling this together. So, um, so I just want to, again, commend the administration and, and the com various committees that are doing the, the hard work um, already and appreciate the reaffirmation of that, those efforts. <clears throat> All right. Next up is our health and safety plan for summer athletics. So um, this is brand new. So before we have any motions, um, I'm going to put Mr. Seymour on the spot and let him do a presentation on it. So we're all understanding um, what we're being asked to vote on. Great. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Bennett. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Barrett. Um, this is Mike Seymour. Uh, as Dr. Speaker Polabinski suggested, the PIAA requires for each school district to create their own plan, have the board approve it, and eventually post it on their school district website. Um, the committee itself considered guidelines from the Pennsylvania Department of Education, the CDC, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, the Chester County Department of Health, the National Federation of Athletic Associations, National Athletic Training Association and the Cavalcade of Bands. So we, we really took a lot of uh, information from a lot of different places to create our off-season voluntary uh, return to participation plan. So this plan covers athletics and the marching band specifically. Uh, my hope here is to provide an overview of the plan. The full plan goes into much greater detail and I'll be happy to answer questions along the way or at the end if anybody has any. Um, okay, so the points of emphasis. Uh, first of all, the most important thing is we are only talking about voluntary activities. Uh, these are all things that are considered off-season programs for marching band or for athletics. And, um, you know, they are voluntary. They are not mandated in any way. It does not affect their uh, status on their teams. Um, this does not, you know, cover anything to do with our regular in-season uh, athletic or uh, marching band activities. So staff members and students uh, who are wishing to participate uh, must complete the COVID-19 awareness training that we created for Great Valley uh, prior to any participation to anything this summer. Uh, that will involve basically a short PowerPoint and then a quiz that they need to take uh, using the Canvas learning platform uh, that we've created. So this class will emphasize the importance of minimizing the risk of the COVID-19 transmission uh, at practices, the Overlapping of groups will be minimized and the cleaning of clothing and equipment will be uh, stressed. Um, okay, next slide, please. So the facilities and cleaning and care. So all practice facilities will be uh, sanitized before each practice, as will the equipment uh, that is used during the practices. Um, the attempt will be to minimize the amount of equipment that's shared between uh, athletes or between uh, band members. There'll be hand sanitizer provided for each team, and there'll also be hand sanitizer um, at all the different practice facilities, whether they be inside or outside. Um, the next area for concern is the areas for staff to address. So um, the, uh, the, the, staff, uh, if the staff has questions, they should direct it towards me. I'm gonna be the primary point of contact, but they can also reach out to our athletic trainer, who is Keith Johnson or the marching band director who is Sean Cohen, they may be able to answer some questions. If not, I am uh, certainly be willing to find out the answers for anybody if they have questions. Um, all the activities will take play, or sorry, will take into account the hygiene practices and social distancing. The uh, National Federation of High School Association uses the term pods. So you might see that in some different um, plans if you take a look at what other school districts are doing. And what pods basically are are small groups, so smaller groups of kids that are on a team where the coach will try to have those students practice together, whatever it happens to be. So there would be a minimized, um, I guess, exposure to the uh, full team or the, for the full band and that those pods would be something that would be, 
you know, encouraged as long as they could. Again, we're talking about off season. So um, to ensure that facilities are properly cleaned, we'll keep a close eye on what facilities are being used. For instance, uh, part of the plan outlines that the coaches or the band director needs to make sure that the administration including that included in that is the uh, maintenance staff knows what uh, what areas are being used so we can properly uh, clean those things and make sure they're ready to go for the next uh, group that comes in. Um, the staff will remain on site until all the students are picked up so we can make sure that you know other people aren't getting outside outside people aren't getting access to our area that we are going to use. Okay for the area for our students to consider. So students must realize that access to all parts of the building will be minimized. Um, inside, for instance, the uh, locker rooms will not be available. Uh, band room storage areas will not be available. Uh, now that we are in the green phase, there will be access um, if need be to the gyms and the, the auditorium and let's say the band room, but the emphasis we placed on putting as many things outside the building as possible. So we minimize, uh, you know, the number of people that are coming inside. Um, so the awareness training will be uh, important role, will play an important role for each of the participant to understand that they're reading their own health. Um, and uh, we don't really want, if, if kids are, are not feeling well, our staff members aren't feeling well, don't come in and uh, let us know, let us know from afar so that we can uh, make sure that we keep everything safe for everybody else. Uh, students must bring their own water bottles. Uh, we are, in this summer, we are not going to provide water to minimize, again, the contamination possibilities. Um, we want our students to be cognizant that their instruments and mouth guards and other things that they're, that they're using should stay away from, you know, their fellow students and staff members. Um, okay, so the screening procedure. So that might be, you know, of interest to a lot of people of how we're going to do, what we're going to do as far as screening. So as I mentioned already, um, the, uh, the COVID-19 awareness training uh, is uh, something that we put together for, um, uh, for a PowerPoint and then they will take a, uh, a, a Canvas quiz and they need to get 100 on that quiz. They can take it as many times as they want and that will be not only for the students but also for the staff. Um, at each practice, the student staff must uh, fill a three-part questionnaire out. It includes their name, a question about their own health, and a question about uh, the health of people that they are in contact with. Uh, at the end of that questionnaire, there will be a staff member that will take the student's uh, temperature. And uh, if the temperature is 99.5 or above, as it is uh, recommended by the uh, Chester County Department of Health, then we would start a process of finding out what we need to do. Uh, we don't want to overreact because if a kid was running late and he or she literally ran to practice, we would want to take those things into consideration. Um, and our athletic trainer would be involved, not only for the athletics, but also for the marching band if something like that were to, to, uh, to come up. So if a student or a staff member answers yes to anything, we're going to start into our protocol where we, um, that we remove them, we have them go to a doctor, and then we figure out um, you know, exactly what needs to be done before they can return to uh, participation. Uh, just, just recently, we did purchase 24 new, new thermometers that are gonna be for the marching band for the athletic department. And as far as the face coverings go, um, it is recommended or we are mandating that all of our, this summer, that all of our uh, staff members, whether it be marching band or athletics, will wear their uh, their face coverings um, at all times, unless it's uh, medically a concern for them, and that students will be asked to wear their masks as they arrive to practice. If their warm up uh, involves stretching, that they would uh, continue to wear it during stretching, but we would not recommend uh, that while they are participating, that they are actually uh, wearing their face masks as well. And that sort of follows the guidelines uh, that come from all those major groups. Um, I, I have just uh, shown here in the next slide the, the green phase. We do have a red phase and yellow phase that you can see if you want to look at the full, um, you know, the, the, the full plan. But you can see here, Chester County, as it being in the green phase, um, there are a couple things. So I already talked about the, uh, the questionnaire and that they have their temperature being checked. The indoor and outdoor facilities at this point may be used, but no locker rooms or band storage, as we said. Um, what we basically did to determine the number of people that could fit inside 
was, again, we wanted our groups inside to be uh, no more than 25, including uh, adults. And uh, we, we, we measured the different spaces to find out with social distancing, what was the largest number of people that could fit in that space. And that's where those numbers came from, the band room, the auditorium, the choral room. Obviously the main gym can fit more people in, but the number is 25. If we're outside, the number is 250. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're hoping tomorrow morning that uh, I'm gonna be having an educational class with, with all the, uh, the head coaches and some of the assistant coaches to go through what the expectations would be to, you know, to keep those kids safe uh, while they're participating, whether it be inside or outside. Um, some of the basic uh, guidelines that we would like to suggest is to minimize group huddles for instruction, maintain appropriate uh, you know, social distancing. So the old idea of you know, everybody come in here so we can talk about it, um, we need to change some of our habits there. Um, when the numbers get larger, like outside for 250, the pods can expand up to as many as 20. Um, physical contact, we're gonna sort of try to uh, teach the, uh, the kids and I guess the uh, coaches and, and uh, other staff members to minimize handshaking, high fives and fist bumps and things like that. Uh, we don't want the kids to share any of their drinks or towels or pennies and, and, and uh, instruments and equipment. Um, the, we're gonna try to have activities that will minimize the, uh, the contact with um, you know, multiple, uh, let's say footballs or soccer balls and that we will uh, try to sanitize those once practices are over. That um, the restrooms may be used, but again, the idea of respect for social distancing, uh, the uh, student meetings must respect the social distancing or be virtual whenever possible. So uh, what I have down here for as far as parents and guardians and spectators, we don't really want them coming to the, uh, the off-season practices in any way. Um, and we're encouraging them. We know that the Chester County will provide guidelines of what they can do and not do. So we did, I did include the, uh, the connection there for the Chester County uh, rules and guidelines for them. Um, but we don't want, if you're not feeling well, we don't want you there watching, trying to be there for your team. And we don't want really parents or guardians around uh, or even interested people to watch. We just want to, to be our, you know, our students and our staff members. And then just the final one, uh, final slide just uh, indicates that um, I am the, uh, the uh, point of reference. So if anybody has any questions or concerns, uh, whether it is through athletics or for marching band, that they should uh, feel free to contact me. And um, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at what their question is and I'll try to answer it for them. Does anybody have any questions about the either the full plan or, or what I uh, presented tonight? Hi, Mike. This is uh, Jen Armstrong. I just have a quick question in regards to the bathrooms. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if the plan is at all to have any overlapping groups from the standpoint of if they're not near each other, but there's some kids practicing for band or football or whatever else. But I know sometimes in the heat, um, not all of the kids are able to withstand the heat and sometimes there's sure. vomiting. Yeah. Um, is there a plan for bathroom cleaning in between students or leaving any cleaning supplies in the bathroom for them to um, kind of wipe down when they leave in terms of, of that, those kind of situations where they might, they might feel the need to be spitting or coughing or throwing up in the bathroom since it's not totally outside the realm? Yeah, so thanks, Jen. So a couple things about that. First of all, we're gonna encourage whether it's band or the athletics to minimize their practices to an hour and a half or less. With that, if there is shared space, um, we are gonna have at least a 15 minute buffer in between um, teams or groups that are using that space. Uh, one of the things that will be important and that we, uh, the plan is to stress it to um, the staff members is that we know when and where they are planning to be there to utilize so that our, um, you know, it's that our maintenance group uh, can make sure we get in there and to, uh, you know, clean those things to the best of our ability. Um, I have not had any conversation with anybody specifically about somebody getting sick to their stomach as a result of the heat. That certainly is a realistic uh, concern. Um, I know I've had ongoing conversations um, with, the, uh, with the maintenance department, uh, with Ken and Jim, as we go through there and make sure we have the right kind of thermometers and make sure that we're using the right kind of hand sanitizer and, and where we're gonna place the hand sanitizer and how we're gonna uh, clean the equipment and so on. So um, that's a great question as far as specifics. Um, I guess my hope would be that the staff member involved 
would uh, through what we'll go over in the uh, the class that we'll have for them as coaches and as uh, you know the band group is that you know they'll be better at helping us make good choices for the kids. So if the kid gets you know sick in the trash can, that there will be cer certain steps that we'll try to take to you know, move that away from everybody else. Are, are you also planning to restrict, I know in the high school, having, having been part of the volunteer band staff, um, usually the building is kind of open in terms of which bathrooms they can choose. Are you planning to have just very specific areas so that you know what spaces they've used so you don't have someone using a facility that you weren't anticipating and so you've cleaned what you thought they used, but in fact that was not what they used? Yep. Um, th that's, that's a great question as well. Yes, yeah, so it is going to be very outlined where they're allowed to go, where they're allowed to be and not be. Um, the, uh, those conversations, uh, again, our, our plan is to um, have this, this, to have this plan in place for, uh, to begin on the 13th of, um, of July. So there are some, some very specific things that we need to iron out further. Um, one of those things is, is what are the areas that the kids are allowed to be in and what are the areas that they're not allowed to be in. So um, that will be much more tightened up as we get closer to what those specific things. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that we are including our maintenance staff to help make those decisions as well um, so that they know where, where to check and that the staff members can tell the kids there, here's where you're allowed to go and not allowed to go. My, my last question, I'm so sorry, I have so many questions. Um, the, in regards to temperatures and thermometers, are most of the thermometers um, like the, the um, infrareds or are they oral thermometers? Are they forehead thermometers? Because I know one of the things we've seen um, at work is that with the elevated temperatures outside, mm -hmm. um, people who are waiting in hot cars, people who are waiting um, in the sun, to be screened to come in is causing false elevations in temperature. And sometimes we have to resort back to oral, to all the way back to oral temperatures mm -hmm. because the skin is hotter than the actual internal temp. Right, so the, the, uh, the thermometers that we're planning to use are the ones that we use on the forehead. Um, many plans that are out there for other school districts are not including that as part of their, um, I guess their screening process because it's not mandated. Um, our hope is to include it uh, with the understanding that there may be some false readings and that we are not going to jump to conclusions that, you know, if somebody is testing higher, we're going to look into why are they, they testing higher before practice? Um, you know, why, why, why are they, they that way? And not just to say, okay, you need to go to the doctors and get, to get cleared. I would also encourage you to have some backup, like talk to the nurses in the buildings and see if they have any backup for the oral with the with the sheaths that go on top of them so you don't have to worry, you know, for the contamination so that you have some kind of backup plan. Um, like I said, we're, we're definitely noticing a, a huge spike in that and especially late July, August when it's going to be super hot outside. I would anticipate that it, it might be more than you think. Okay, now my um, quick question is, when you, when you say, are those the ones that you put under your tongue, but they're uh, disposable? Well, so there's different kinds of under the tongues. There's totally disposable under the tongues that are strictly one use. Then there's also some that have, um, where the thermometer itself is a multi-use thermometer, but it has a sheath that you put the thermometer into so Perfect. that the actual thermometer itself doesn't go into somebody's mouth. Um, and then you can throw away the sheath and, and disinfect the thermometer um, so that you're not trying to, so that you would never just put like a bare thermometer from one kid's mouth into another kid's mouth. Okay. You know what I mean? So that you might have some other options for oral temps. I, I just think that you may run into this just okay. because if you're strictly using forehead thermometers, it, it's a strong possibility. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the, uh, the information, the feedback. And it's one of the reasons why initially we are only offering this to our fall sports so that we, we can get a sense of how, um, how we are proceeding with this. The plan itself would, um, would also uh, allow the winter sports and the spring sports to participate in the off season. But initially here in July, we want to work things out to make sure that our fall sports have the best opportunity to be ready to go for the season, assuming that there's going to be a season. Right. No, absolutely. I hear what you're saying. I just know that the supply chain for some of this yeah. is extremely no, delicate. No, no, and that's why I mention it now. No, that's, that's great. I appreciate that. Mike, this is Neha. Um, my question is actually related to that supply chain is just that as people start to 
um, as other districts and um, the areas around us start to open up with these things, are you finding any difficulty in obtaining the supplies? Well, I've been lucky. Um, uh, Ken Morris has been uh, somebody who has an amazing uh, connection and he is uh, one of the people and he's a supervisor within the uh, maintenance department. He's been very, very lucky to be able to get all this stuff. Um, we haven't, we're not at the point of stockpiling. Um, I did buy a case of hand sanitizer where each case would be um, four gallons of hand sanitizer per program, including the marching band. Um, so we're in pretty good shape right now. Um, having nothing to do with this plan in particular, I'm also looking into uh, today, I ordered some, um, what are they called, electronic whistles. So if we have some coaches, not all our coaches use whistles, but the ones who use whistles, um, you know, there's been some recommendations out there that officials, for instance, don't use whistles because of the amount of effort that they're putting into blowing the whistle and the possible, um, you know, uh, contamination coming out of the, of the whistle and so on. So, uh, so far we've been, we've been pretty lucky with that, but, um, you know, it's, we're early in the process as far as that goes. Right. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome, thank you. Very good, and I know there's a lot of sports people and I'm sure band people anxious to get started, so um, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve 9.02, this is Jen. Thank you. And a second. Is the second is fine. Yep. Thank you, Brian. Any more questions or comments? All right. Ready to vote, Wendy. Thank you for. Sorry, the I'm sorry. I had a, I was on mute. I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mike, if if yeah. um, a, a team member. Is on. I, I maybe missed this. If someone is, in, is unable to participate in their practice this summer, or uh, whether it's sports or, or band, um, mm -hmm. because they they prefer to to wait out the the pandemic a little bit more, but still want to join in the fall, will they be penalized in any way for not participating this summer? I think you said it was optional, but I just wanted to. Yeah, no, all the him. this plan is only addressing the off season voluntary. Um, voluntary. Okay. Thank you. So uh, and the coaches are going to be stressed, and the band is going to be stressed. I had conversations with Sean about <laughs> sorry uh that the um there will be you know there's no effect on the on the rest of the year okay that, you. that brings up a good question though um so the starting of official practices that usually happens somewhere in the beginning of august yeah that's still uh pending what or is it pending anything at this no. point at this point, it's not pending, but we will come up with a very similar plan that will address specifically uh, during the school year in season, uh, marching band and in season athletics as well. So a lot of the stuff will be very similar. Uh, we won't even consider having, you know, any uh, red phases because if we're in red, we're, we're not going to be in school anyway. So that would be, uh, you know, no reason gotcha. to include that. So a lot of the, a lot of the things will look very, very similar. But. But, so, so it sounds like we will be getting another plan to approve uh, for the next phase of uh, said practices slash games, assuming things continue to progress in that direction. That, that's right. The plan at this point okay. is to present it on the uh, 20th of, uh, of July. Thanks. So, Mike, sure. so, so for parents, just to clarify that, you, um, Dave said official practices that are in season starts at some point in August. Yeah. Do you know yet if that will be? Um, optional or not, like, like if, if children want to participate in, in sports in the fall, will they must, will it be mandatory that they go to those uh, official practices in August or is it too early to say that? Um, that? That's a great question. It's probably too early to determine that, but um, heat acclimation is uh, something that football has to go through um, and that starts August 10th and all the other sports uh, start August 17th. So we're going to be really close to the school year, we should have a really good idea by then, you know, uh, where we're going. Uh, you know, there's certainly, you know, sometimes things are changing on a daily basis or weekly basis. Um, um, 
but uh, you know, it, it probably would depend on the sport itself. But in, you know, us, all all athletics are you know optional. We're not at a school where you know you have to be in the band or you have to be out for a team. So every every you know every student sh can make their own choices with that. But there probably will be a point at which that they need to consider: Are they going out or not? Based on what everything else is doing. So uh, we should have a better idea once we have the full school plan ready to go and we have the um, in season plan ready to go. But um, you know, uh, if certainly if the if the kid if the student is um, concerned about their own health, probably the best thing would be to choose to wait. You know, some sports we better at uh, allowing those kids to come out later than others. Okay, thank you. I think it'll be important to understand that when the time comes. Yep. But thanks. Yep. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Maybe, hearing that. Sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. Maybe just one more question. Mike, thanks for this overview and all the hard work that's gone into it. Sure. Can you talk to us just for a minute about how we might think about the evolution of this plan? I know from a from a school year planning perspective, information is changing almost by the minute and Infer we're, we're learning things about this virus by the minute. Are, are there any thoughts about how we should be thinking about this plan as fluid and when we might assess its validity or make tweaks, et cetera? Well, that, that's, that's a great question. And uh, one of the things that some of the other school districts did is they, they had plans, phase one, two, and three, where each phase was two weeks long. And depending on which phase you're in, it also depended on which color you're in. Um, our committee decided to change to be, I guess, different than they are. And uh, for the off-season uh, practices, um, there is a red phase. So if we as the county are red phase, there's some guidelines of what you could do, which would all be virtual, um, what you can do there as a program. And then if we're in the yellow, there are, um, you know, a different set of requirements and expectations and things like that for yellow and green. So if we were to have a setback, theoretically, um, you know, we could just slide into the plan. I know tonight I didn't really go over the yellow uh, phase, but we could just simply slide back within the plan and, and follow the guidelines that the yellow phase, which is a little bit more strict, obviously, than what the green phase would be. So I, I don't know if that offers any answers to that. So it does, it has a little bit more flexibility. I don't know where some of these school districts, when they get to the third phase, if they go to yellow, I don't, I don't know how they can do their third phase because you know, some of the things that they want to do during their, their third phase are not going to be possible because we're going to be in yellow. Yeah, that helps. I think a good plan is always different than a plan executed. And I just want to make sure that we're staying flexible if something that we have on paper winds yeah. up not playing out as we thought, that we remain flexible to doing it. And that, that was our thought or idea rather than sort of, um, you know, making it so explicit that there was no wiggle room whatsoever um, to allow for you know, things to change. Uh, on uh, this weekend, uh, the Chester County Department of, of Health released, released something based on athletics. I'm like, oh my gosh, the, the meetings on Monday, here they are changing things. And they didn't really actually change that much. So it worked out okay. But we really did a, 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 a what I think the committee did a great job taking a look at all those different groups and seeing all those considerations. And to be honest, I think ours is a little bit more strict than what some of the other ones are that are out there. And I think it's better for our staff and better for our students because we're going to keep them a little safer. Thank you. You're welcome. I do want to take a moment. Um, Mr. Seymour, thank you so much because he really did bring a collective group together around this topic to have a really comprehensive plan. Um, and I think it definitely shows in the outcome, the product, um, Mr. Seymour, and I really wanted to thank you for that real, real collaborative effort in getting the plan um, finalized. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, Wendy, vote. Aye. Thank you, Brian. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Amy. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Jen. Aye. Samantha. Aye. Neha. Aye. Dave is also an aye. Uh, motion passes nine to zero. All right, moving on to facilities. We have a uh, ten point oh one through ten point oh six. Um, Chuck, you want to run down these real fast? <clears throat> and what they are? Certainly, thank you. 
we're working to balance our financial constraints with maintaining safe, attractive, and functional facilities. And with that in mind, we're recommending these items as our summer projects. The first item, 10.01, is boiler replacement at, um, at the district office in Sugartown Elementary. Uh, the re burner replacement has been an ongoing project and the district office in Sugartown are the last of the uh, boilers to be replaced. We already uh, have the boilers and the item tonight, if you approve it, is the installation of both of those boiler systems. Item 10.02 is uh, seal coating parking lots at General Wayne, uh, the district warehouse in Sugartown. Our parking lots are on a five-year rotation for sealing, and that has served the district well in maintaining um, the length of time between getting actual paving projects done. Likewise, 10.03 is to keep our, our pavement in good shape, and the pothole filling is for Charlestown Elementary, the bus depot, and the middle school, and they've identified 50 uh, potholes that need to be replaced in those uh, in those three entities and um, this company has done a good job with uh, with doing this for us in the past. Item 10.04 is to uh, a contract to test the concrete that's being delivered for the summer concrete project. The investment that the board's making in that district-wide concrete project is $448,000 and this really will protect that investment. Uh, when we were doing the uh, concrete project last summer at the middle school, uh, we had a similar service, actually the same service, and there were numerous instances when the uh, trucks arrived and the concrete was tested and it didn't pass the test and they were rejected and the concrete was sent back and they actually had to turn to a, a different supplier. So if we didn't do that, there's a chance that we could have mm -hmm. the concrete deteriorate in the near future and cause us all kind of problems. So this will protect that investment. 10.05 is um, to repair the uh, Charlestown Elementary main entrance door. It's a 1929 door and the restoration will include removal and disposal of the existing trim, installation of new PVC trim that'll match and look like the original, uh, caulk and paint that trim, and inst install new copper flashing above the new trim and stripping, stripping and painting the existing door. And finally, uh, the, the sign above the door that says Charlestown Elementary will be replaced again with a PVC lettering, which will still look like the original signage. Finally, uh, 10.06 is to replace a Cub Cadet that's about 20 years old. It's used for the high school, middle school complex and it's used for maintenance, groundworks, and, and athletics. In addition to those needs, uh, we're hoping in the future to buy either a brush uh, or a snow blower for this unit to help us maintain all the sidewalks during weather. The uh, current Cub Cadet has a broken axle and is unusable, and this is a, a piece of equipment that's desperately needed for that, for that complex. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions the board might have. All right, any questions on any of these? All right, do I have a motion? Motion to approve 10.01 through 10.01. Um, is that through 10 motion to approve 10.01 through 10.06 inclusive? I'm sorry, somebody muted me in the middle of my sentence. Sorry That's about okay. that. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. I have a second. Second, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Any questions or comments on any of these? All right. Wendy. Hi. Brian. Hi. Rachel? Hi. Amy? Hi. Stephen? Hi. Uh, Jen? Hi. Samantha? Hi. Neha? Hi. Dave is an I also. Motion passes nine to zero. All right. That ends the voting part of our uh, presentation or our meeting.
Um, I'll now open it back up for any um, public comments that we might have received on any other subjects. We have one comment. We have one comment from Sherry Lawrence on Howl Road in Malvern. She says, after reading the June 2020 considerations for reopening Pennsylvania schools report produced by REL Mid Atlantic for the Pennsylvania Department of Education. I was intrigued about the criteria used by the authors to assess a COVID-19 infection outbreak in a school setting, which was five positive cases, starting on page 21 of the report under the agent-based model predictions header. With the participation plan that was presented this evening, I did not see what would cause the volunteer off-season participation program to be deemed to change to a yellow phase or a red phase. Will the standard also be five positive cases as well? Will this be the standard as well for the general reopening plan that, was present, that will be presented on July 20th? While we all hope we don't see any positive cases, what will it take for a reassessment to occur regarding the openness of the programming and buildings? What are the Chester County Health Department guidelines around this? Thank you for your time. That's the only comment I have. All right, thank you. And uh, again, uh, more, um, more plans will be presented as we move forward and a lot more questions addressed, um, especially around the school opening. That plan will pre be presented. We're having a meeting on July 20th, um, Monday evening, and that is the night we will be laying out the plan. All right, uh, no response to public comments from the previous meeting. Other board comments? All right, I have one. Um, I want to personally thank uh, Dr. Regina Speaker Paula Bensky for everything she's done for this school district over the last, uh, I guess, five years. Is that right? Five years. Um, when several of us that are on the board now and nine of us at the time um, sought out to seek a replacement and a new superintendent, um, we came across her as an applicant. Uh, we presented her with a lot of challenges as she accepted our role, and I think she stepped forward and probably met every one of those challenges well. So I personally just want to thank you uh, for all you've done for Great Valley, and I wish we could give you a standing ovation. Um, I guess we're all standing at home clapping, so thank you. Um, but um, thank you for everything, and I want to wish you luck in your new adventure over at Montgomery County. Wishing it was still here at Great Valley, but thank you. Thank you. It has truly been my honor and pleasure and I thank all of you for all I've learned. Thank you so much. Regina, this is Neha. I, um, as a new member, I haven't spent quite as much time with you as the other board members, but I just wanna let you know that for something coming, coming on as a new board member was um, an intimidating intimidating experience, but you made it about as smooth and um, accessible uh, as it could possibly be. And I really appreciate all the efforts you took to really helping all of us new board members kind of get on board um, without skipping a step. Um, so I appreciate that. I can't imagine a better person at the leading the helm of that. Thank you, Neha. You're making me a little weepy. So thank you. <laughs> This I'll chime in as well, Regina. This is Amy, just with a very simple thank you for your wisdom and your leadership and the grace that you've um, brought to so many difficult decisions um, and discussions. So thank you on behalf of, of my children, all the children of Gray Valley. Good luck to you and the children of Montgomery County are in great hands. Thank you, Amy. Hey, Hi, this is, go ahead. This is Rachel. Um, like Neha, I'm new to the board, um, but I've been so, so impressed with your leadership ability. Um, I'm big on awesome female leadership. We don't have enough of it in the world, um, but you, you bring it and you bring it every day. It's direct. It's efficient. <laughs> um, it makes my heart sing in those ways. Um, but really, I'm just so impressed at the way you tackle the tough conversations and you don't shy away from it um, and you go right at it with the sole purpose 
of making the experience of our children better. That is, that is from day one, the second I met you, that has been so clear that that is your only agenda is how can we make things better for our students? And it's not easy and it's relentless, but you stick with it and you do it with such energy and enthusiasm and it's much appreciated and did not go unnoticed. So thank you for everything you did. And I'm only sorry we didn't get to work together longer. Thank you, Rachel. And I just have to say, I am incredibly thankful that this is a virtual meeting and our cameras are off. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Regina, uh, this is Stephen Dittman. I wanted to thank you, like and other new members, for the time to make me feel welcome, and particularly the tour you once gave me of your office, all those wonderful books, and a treadmill. Perhaps you could consider leaving the treadmill behind for Dan. Yeah. It's done, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, this is Samantha, Regina, again. I, I too am sorry we can't do this in person. Um, I've been on the board uh, two and a half years and, and also appreciate everything you did to onboard me as a new member. But additionally, the collaborative way that you've worked with me and all of us is just invaluable. When you run for board, you run to be part of a board. And I don't think we realize quite as much how um, we're really part of a team that's much larger than the board. And, and it's thanks to you that, that I think we are part of a team and not just a board. And so really appreciate all that you've done to make our work collaborative and be a great partner and, and, and lead us as we lead the district. Thank you. Lead us and teach us. Thank you. Hey, Regina, it's Jen. I can't believe it's been five years. I will always remember you for our, our day night switches and all of the amazing leadership and you will, always be part of the Great Valley family, um, no matter where you travel, no matter where those travels take you, you still have a home here in Great Valley. And I wish you the best of luck. This position, you will bring so much caring and knowledge and leadership too. I can only be jealous of all of those kids in Montgomery County that are gonna benefit from you being there. Thank you for Thanks. having come to us and accepted our offer when you did, and we'll miss you terribly. Thank you so much, Jim. Hey, Regina, it's Brian. I just want to thank you for your role and for your mentor mentorship and guidance of the other admin that lead us into such a great position where you are with, with Dan right now. Um, I don't think we would be in such a good position without you. Uh, good luck. Thank you, Brian. Regina, it's Wendy. It's a 24 seven job um, and you have done it with passion and enthusiasm and we will miss you. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Wendy. I so appreciate all of you and I truly um, have been blessed to have worked with all of you. And I am so incredibly excited to watch the great things that are going to happen in Great Valley under Dan's leadership with the team of 10 that is in place. Um, I know it's going to just continually get better. All right. Well, we are also very excited with Dan moving, you know, uh, bringing us to the next phase, but very sad that you're leaving us and I assume that's a cold we hear and not you using up your Kleenexes. I'm just kidding. I need a new box. <laughs> <laughs> well again thank you. Um, at this point I will seek a motion to adjourn your last meeting with Great Valley and wish you luck over at the Montgomery IU. It's Jen Armstrong. I'm Sad and happy all at the same time to make this motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion, Amy. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor in unison? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passed nine to zero. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.